It featured Bobby Lane of Texas against SMU's Doak Walker, both from the same high school in Dallas, Highland Park. History repeats itself today as two Highland Park products, Rob Morshell of Texas and Lance McElhaney of SMU, square off against each other. Texas leads this series that began in 1916. And last year, the Longhorns had pulled into a tie with SMU. And then a near interception turned the game around. Bobby Leach, the miracle man of 1982, took the deflection and went 79 yards to score. First-year coach Bobby Collins marched on to a Southwest Conference championship, a Cotton Bowl win, and was voted the league's coach of the year. This is the trophy they both covet. Today, the SMU Mustangs against the second-ranked Texas Longhorns, a showdown from the state of Texas. The following is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. It's the second-ranked Texas Longhorns versus the ninth-ranked Mustangs of SMU. Sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move, and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. And by AC Delco, General Motors Corporation. AC Delco is the way to go. Texas Stadium, a sellout of 65,000, the 63rd meeting between two bitter rivals. It's a grudge match. While SMU has won two of the last three meetings, they haven't beaten Texas and Dallas since 1965, 18 years ago. Texas leads the series. At one time, they won 13 in a row. But SMU winning two games in Austin, but hoping somehow to pull out one here at Texas Stadium. And here come the Longhorns of Texas. West Conference title in 1977. That was Fred Aker's first year as head coach at Texas. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. If you like defense, you're going to like this game today. Texas, the top-ranked defense in the country. SMU is ranked fifth. And the Mustangs come in here, and they are upset. They're not getting the respect they think they deserve. They have the nation's longest winning streak at 21 games. They feel that they're the Rodney Dangerfield of college football. On the other hand, Texas more and more respect every weekend. This is the third straight week away from home. Stops one and two, very successful, defeating Oklahoma and Arkansas. Fred Akers has told us that if Texas wins today, they should be the number one ranked team in the country. Fred Akers, a very studious man, a conscientious man. He's a competitor. He loves to coach in the big games, and he employs a positive approach. He likes to recruit people with high self-esteem a strong family man he and his wife Diane he is a man that has had as a theme at Texas this he says that tough times don't last but tough people do my broadcasting partner is Pat Heaton Pat rich heritage rich tradition in the mid 50s there was a McElhaney plane and we have one today Lance McElhaney the quarterback he is from right here in Dallas grew up not far from the SMU campus he's a business major a very nice young man Bobby Collins said about Lance McElhaney, he said, I don't understand why people aren't considering him for the Heisman Trophy. He's one of those old-fashioned, chew-out-your-offensive lineman type of leaders. The thing that Lance McElhaney does best is run the option play, come down that line of scrimmage, and pitch the ball to their best tailbacks. Their best runners a year ago was the Pony Express, Eric Dickerson and Craig James. 
Well, they have graduated, but don't feel too sorry because they still have plenty of horsepower. Jeff Atkins and Reggie Dupard. Now, Atkins is a highly recruited freshman who's a tough, powerful inside runner. Dupard, on the other hand, is more of a slasher, can break a lot of tackles and make you miss. But as much offense as we have today, it may be a defensive day. Now, Lou Holtz and Barry Switzer have said that Texas defense is the best in the land. There's not too many people who are going to argue with them. They play a tough, aggressive 4-3 defense, put pressure all over the field. Now, SMU plays a 34 defense. They're awfully tough, too. They're ankled, anchored in the defensive line. Field position is going to be a key today, I think, Gary. And John Telschik of Texas may be the advantage. He's a punter who's, who's punted for a 46-yard average. The last two weeks, he's backed up Oklahoma and Arkansas. SMU is struggling in that department. Their punter, Whit Smith, has had two punts blocked, one for a touchdown. And he is psychologically trying to fight through that. So SMU will have an anxious moment when he drops back to punt. The 63rd meeting, showdown, Texas against... The Southwest Conference officials in charge of this game. The referee is Dixon Holman from Arlington, Texas. Louis Schauffel, Bobby Ratliff, Bobby Brooks, Frank Shepard, and Jim Evans. Texas has won the toss. They have waved it off. As an end result, SMU will receive. Jeff Ward, number 23, will kick. The freshman from Austin. Back deep for the Mustangs is Donald Allen, number 12. He's a freshman from Fort Worth. from the five-yard line. Texas with excellent coverage. Michael Brown was down there first for the Longhorns, and SMU will not have the field position. Let's look now at the SMU offense. The back, Lance McElhaney. He's the man who's going to run the offense. He has the quick hands. He keeps his team moving. The wide receivers, Marquise Pleasant. He's a freshman. He's averaging three touchdown catches the last time out along with Ron Morse who leads the Southwest Conference in average and then up front Andrew Campbell outstanding guard a junior first down now from the 12 yard line McElhaney off to Depard Reggie Depard a sophomore from New Orleans brings the ball out to the 24 June James 62 making the stop Texas defensively Eric Holly. One of the captains, he's been playing outstanding defense for this Texas team. The other side is Ed Williams. The two of them will have to stop the option of McElhaney. In the middle, Jeff Whiting. He had 15 solo tackles against Arkansas. And back deep, Mossy Cade. He might be the best cornerback in college football. And Jerry Dre, the free safety. The SMU people feel he might be the best they have in the secondary. This Texas secondary, you mentioned the secondary. A lot of people think it's the best secondary across the land. They're very, very aggressive. They play man-to-man -man defense, bump and run. They work you all over the field. And what SMU wants to do early, as Eric Parsegian mentioned, is put their receivers in motion and test them deep. Try to throw the ball deep early in the football game. Depart on that first carry, picking up almost 10 yards. Going to bring up second down, less than a yard to go. This is McElhaney out of Highland Park in Dallas. Charles in the backfield along with Depard. That's Bolden the tight end. Jumping in to the near side. Give to the second man, Depard. And Depard appears to have the first down close to the 25. June James again making the stop for the Texas Longhorns. Remember, this Texas team defensively is the best in the country coming in here. First down, SMU. There's so many things that make you a good defense. But last week, Dave McWilliams, their defensive coordinator, said one of the things we took the most pride in was stopping Arkansas on the goal line. And they put a lot of pressure on it. It's a penetrating defense. Watch how much penetration they get in on SMU's offensive line. First down for the 25, McElhaney. Ron Morris. Ron Morris, the freshman. Mossy K defending a 65-yard completion. Jordan, 
their offensive coordinator said at SMU wanted to go deep early just to let them know they have the capability of doing so. Ron Morris, the freshman flanker, he has 10 300 meter speed. The ball is perfectly thrown by Lance McElhaney, and Ron Morris is there to make a catch. That is going to make this Texas defensive secondary think about the deep pass all afternoon. That will be officially recorded as a 60 yard completion at the 15 yard line. First down for the Mustangs. Depart. Depart for two. One of the interesting things about that deep pass early in the football game, too, it sets up a lot of things. Now, Jerry Gray, their free safety of Texas, is their leading tackler, but now he has to think about defending the deep pass. So that was one of the things SMU, SMU wanted to do was take Jerry Gray's aggressiveness away from him. Morris and Pleasant, both freshmen. And according to the coaches talking about this game, they could be the difference makers. And you saw early what Morris can do. Back it down, eight. Depart. Depart inside the 10 to the eight. The ball is loose, but it's been blown dead. SMU will maintain possession. There was lighting. He thought he had a crack at the fumble. Well, we've seen SMU run option plays. We've seen him throw a long play. And here's just a straight off tackle power play. He falls, follows his fullback. Michael Charles, number 42, steps inside. There he's down with the ball. The ball pounces up, but the official had ruled that he always was down on the ground. Third down four. That's secondary again. You could see how they fly up to the football. Curry and Cade. Third down and four as both Pleasant and Morris are split to the top. Charles and Depard, the running backs. McElhaney. Charles, the fullback. And it's fourth down. June James, 62, the right side linebacker, played that very well. Charles, they don't throw to him that much. And it was a good call. It's third and four. You're facing a man-to-man -man defense. And what do you do? You try to put a back against the linebacker. And you get the matchup. You see James covering number 42, Charles right there. The ball is well thrown. Charles couldn't hang on. Had he caught it, it would have been a first down. So we'll have a field goal attempt. Jeff Harrell, number three, who's five at nine, will attempt one from 25 yards. Don King to hold. And the Mustangs are on the board. SMU, by virtue of that 60-yard pass, gets three points. They strike early with 12.25 to go in the first quarter. The defending conference champions have the lead. This game marks the anniversary of his start when they beat Texas when he was a freshman. He has not thrown an interception in this football uh, this season. Actually, both neither quarterback has thrown an interception all year. And Texas, for that matter, all their quarterbacks have avoided that. Nebraska is struggling with Colorado. Nebraska's been pushed a little bit. This is a real surprise to many people. Penn State. Understand Doug Strang came out and hit his first 11 passes in that game. And we saw West Virginia. They're a very good football team, too. Now, Auburn, their only loss was to this team here, Texas. And Florida leading East Carolina. East Carolina's upset some people. Harold the kick, number three. Jitter Fields and Kelvin Epps will go back for the Texas Longhorns. An impressive start by this SMU team. Jeff Harrell out of Houston. At the second best season ever in SMU history and kicking a year ago. Boy, he hit this one. And Fields will not bring it up. So at the 20-yard line, that's where Texas will have it. And offensively, here's a look at the Longhorns, the quarterbacks and receivers. Rob Morrishell threw two long touchdown passes last week against Arkansas. Mike Luck had his best game as a Longhorn last week. He had a 54-yard touchdown run against Arkansas. Here's the offensive line. David Jones, the center. He's matched up against Michael Carter, their nose guard. Good matchup. But the man they always talk about is Doug Dawson, number 66, a preseason All-American. Somebody says he's as strong as a garlic milkshake. <laughs> We had one of those. From the 20, Texas touches the ball for the first time. Mitchell in motion. A give to Luck. And Luck playing with a sore shoulder. Gets little or nothing on that play. Ben Wise was there, and we have a man getting up very slowly. That's Terry Orr, the fullback for Texas. Now defensively for SMU, Michael Carter, the world-class shot putter. 
For the linebackers, Anthony Beverly, he's got great speed, along with the other outside linebacker, number 22, Ron Anderson. Watch these guys run some plays down from behind. The one of the premier players of the country is 29, Russell Carter. He was a corner last year, free safety, has four interceptions. There is Orr, we mentioned earlier, shaken up on that last play. Texas depth-wise, having some problems because Edwin Simmons, their freshman sensation, did not make the trip due to a knee injury. Luck has a shoulder that's bothering him, and now Orr is out of there. Ronnie Robinson has come in with Luck in the backfield. Tucking down eight. More shell, and he'll go nowhere. SMU, the fifth-ranked defense in the country, holds him. Let's go now to New York for an NCAA report. Here's Brent Musburger. Gary, here's Penn State's last touchdown in this big upset of West Virginia. D.J. Dozier, their sensational freshman running back on a screen play. Now, D.J. was held out of the first half. He's a fresh pair of legs, and I'll tell you, Joe Paterno's getting the most out of him. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. We continue to see outstanding freshman running backs. It's three to nothing here. SMU with the lead. Texas with a third and eight on their first series of the ball. Mike Luck carries, and he has the first down. Texas on third and eight, and a 10-yard run by Mike Luck. And at the 32, the Texas Longhorns. It's who a good have not call. won the conference title since 77, trying to play catch up. It is a good call, Gary. You mentioned third and eight. You watch him stretch the defense out and cut back. The defense had overrun it. SMU's defense is a little bit quicker than Texas, so you're going to see them for the great pursuit of SMU, but if you cut underneath it like Mike Luck did there, you're going to have some success. John Walker comes into the backfield for the Longhorns. First down from the 32. This is Walker. And John Walker to the 38 for the Longhorns. Running behind that forward wall, David Jones in place of the injured Mike Ruther. We talked about All-American Doug Dawson. Watch him, number 66, right there in the middle of your screen. He's going to step around. He's looking. He's got his eyes headed on the target right there in number 47, Larry Cox. That's what a good offensive guard has to do, keep his eyes on the target. Doug Dawson says, we just like to overpower people, move them off the ball. It's easy to say that when you're 6'3", 270. Second down and four, and SMU is there. Michael Carter, 74, Larry Cox, 47. Bobby Collins has never lost a game as coach of the SMU Mustangs, taking over last year. His only blemish was a tie with Arkansas, former mentor at Southern Mississippi. Fred Akers, a man who in his first year won the Southwest Conference title, he wants to get it back. 1977, the last time, that's too long as far as he's concerned. Third down and two for Texas. Two tight ends, Mitchell and Jenkins are in. And now we're going to have a timeout. Texas having a little confusion. And Rob Morshell will come to the sideline. SMU leads it three to nothing. Texas has the ball at the 40, a third and two when we return. In conference history to win 30 games. He's won 29 thus far. And look who's on top. Bobby Lane. He would, of course, move ahead of Sammy Ball. Good company. That is big company. After the timeout, Texas with a third and two. Marshall giving off to Luck. Luck has the first down to the 50-yard line. Nine-yard pickup on the play, so the timeout, they call the right play, quite obviously. Nebraska still leading by two over the Buffs of Colorado. Penn State, West Virginia going in there unbeaten. Auburn over Mississippi State. Pat Dye's team has recovered very well, thank you, from that opening day loss. Georgia rolling. And Michigan, last seconds as time was running out, defeated Iowa. John Walker. Walker to the 35 of SMU. Fred Nichols, 25, a cornerback. Upped him out of bounds, a 15-yard pickup by Walker, who's had some brilliant moments for this Texas team. Well, they keep talking about John Walker's potential, and you're going to see why they talk an awful lot about it. He's going to, in the eye formation, he can pick his hole. He sees something backside. Now, a good, good tailback will see that. He's lined up seven yards deep. He picks his hole for a big play. Now, here's the linebacker, number 31, Anthony Beverly. We talked about how quick he is, but he is going to overrun the play. He ran right by John Walker. And they do have quickness and speed at that outside linebacker. 
First down, just short of the 35. Walker again. And Walker to the 31. Pick up a five yards on the play. I think John Walker, Pat, is probably tired of hearing about all his potential. He's always been labeled as a super franchise type player, but never arrived at that level. Well, the United Nations has potential too, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to bring up second down now. A short five for this Texas team. Brent Duhon split out along with Bill Boy Bryant, Ronnie Robinson, John Walker, the running back. Walker again, a workhorse. Short of the first down, it'll come up to third down. Anthony Beverly with a tackle, and Oklahoma without Marcus Dupree rolling. <laughs> Ohio State leading Michigan State. George Perlis really has struggled since losing his number one and two quarterbacks. Third down a yard to go. And we're, and we're seeing classic Texas offensive football, mashing football, run it right at you. Two tight ends now. Mitchell and Jenkins come in. They come to their mash backfield. Three fullbacks in. Get straight ahead. Walker and Walker apparently has the first down and does to the 25. So that timeout, Pat, was a very strategic timeout because Texas now has continued down the field very effectively. We're going to take a look at the center, David Jones, against Michael Carter, who's playing the nose watch. This is where the Southwest Conference Championship is going to be won, right here, and Michael Carter won that round. Round one goes to Michael Carter. SMU calls those interior guys the TNT people, the tackle, the nose guard, and the tackle, and he says they've got to anchor things. First down, Walker again, and he is bent backwards. There's a penalty flag as he's dropped at the 21-yard line. Ben Wise and... Beverly again. You see Beverly, number 31 on the stop. Holding against Texas. We've seen Texas play twice this year, and the big thing about Texas' offense is really they've, they've had so many penalties. They average, I think, 10 penalties, over 10 penalties a, a game, and that has been their biggest disappointment offensively. Fred Akers, a man who says, though, he likes aggressiveness, even though they have paid, as you mentioned, penalty-wise. And that secondary has really been coming after people, and they were the one that was penalized so much against Arkansas. But this time, it's going to be against the line. Holding. Offense. Still first down. So first down and 17, to be exact. Moving the ball back to the 32-yard line. That penalty took them out of what's called the four down zone. Four downs meaning you can rush the ball four downs for a first down. Now they're in a passing situation. Rob Horschel was able to complete the big passes a week ago. Lots of protection. Batted up. That was Ben Wise, 41. There's a penalty flag at the 20-yard line. But Ben Wise, the middle linebacker, got in the way of the pass. Now the discussion. Ben Wise out of Somerville, Texas. Smallest team to play football in the state. They're going to say that the penalty flag was inadvertently dropped because the ball was tipped and it's not pass interference. But look at Rob Morishell as he drops back here. Now you're going to see Ben Wise, their middle linebacker, tipped the ball. He is 6'3". He jumps right there, tips the ball, and Anthony Beverly hit the receiver. The official did not see the tipped ball. But the other official changed the call, saw the tip ball, and so it's not past inter pass interference. Ben Wise said, when we played my senior year in high school, we had 13 players. <laughs> I guess he went both ways. <laughs> I guess so. So it's second down, 17. Robinson, Walker in the backfield. Three to nothing, SMU leading. The blitz is on, and Morshell avoids it. He got away from Anderson. Complete to the 20-yard line, and that's Brent Duhon. And Morshell shows you his boys. 12-yard completion. There is no substitute for athletic ability. Now, they had a safety blitz on you to see number 26 come in in the right part of the screen right there. But Rob Morshell breaks that tackle, comes around, and finds a way to get the ball to number 7, Brent Duon, for the first down. This is a team last week that had two touchdown receptions between the two. But he's running a crossing route. He's wide open. The ball is thrown low and away from the defender. Big play. Now, one thing that Fred Akers told us is that guys like Duhon are so observant, they go back to the huddle and tell their quarterback what might work. Tremendous character. Third and five now. Morshell, a pressure put on by Ben Wise, and he's losing yardage. 
Wise was there. Anderson was there. The entire SMU team was giving chase. 20-yard loss on the play. He was under a lot of duress. Normally, a quarterback should try to get rid of the football in that situation, avoid a sack. I don't think Rob Morshell could do anything with that one. So it's fourth and 25. So after Morshell made a very fine pass completion, it all goes for nine. The really thing that hurt that drive was that holding penalty, though. Now the leading punter in the Southwest Conference, John Telchik, will go back for the Longhorns. He was booming him yesterday. I mean, really getting into him. Averaging 46 yards. He hits it high. It doesn't turn over. And at the five-yard line is where SMU will have to start. 35-yard punt. Very strategically placed by Telchik. Texas now will set it up defensively, trailing by three. John Telchik did an extremely good job. He got the ball down to the five, and that's where SMU will take it. McElhaney giving to Jeff Atkins, who's in for the first time. The freshman from Fort Worth, Tony DeGrate, 99, making the tackle. Field position is critical. You're going to take a look here at 93. Eric Holly as he fights off the block of Ricky Bolden, their tight end. And Bolden does a pretty good job of wrestling him down. Bobby Collins feels that Bolden's the best tight end in the country. Doesn't catch that many passes. You're right, but he's a very good blocker, as we saw there. But the field position is the key. SMU has had two possessions. They started their first possession on the 13, this possession on the five-yard line. Bright Atkins in the backfield. McElhaney gives to Atkins. And he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Ty Allard, Jerry Gray over there. Gray, by the way, number two, leads Texas in tackles. Well, it's interesting to see him up there because SMU wanted to keep him back in the defensive backfield, and that's why they threw that long pass early in the game, but Jerry Gray must not have been paying attention. All right, Pat, you're a quarterback. You got third and ten at the five. I would call him the second-string quarterback. Uh, <laughs> but here's the situation where you have to be careful. If you turn the ball over, you give Texas their opportunistic offense an opportunity to score seven quick on you. It's a situation that SMU likes to run a draw play. On a third and ten, McElhaney. Morris tried to get it at the 38-yard line. Bolden was also down there, but Mossy K, number three, back defensively, and now... A pressure kick. We said at the start of this game that Whit Smith has been struggling as the SMU punter. He's had two blocks. He's a left footer. He can really kick the ball. He has a major league leg, but he's psychologically shaken up. Let's see what happens. Here he is, 16. Oh, he hit that one. Oh, that is going to help his confidence. Oh, did he hit that one? Jitter Fields. At the 30, and SMU comes out of there remarkably well. We might see a different Whit Smith today after a punt like that. Keith Brooks was down there. Our statistician, Mike Swanson, says that's a 67-yard kick. So Whit Smith, psychologically, has to get a lift from that. The Mustangs lead by three. Kick officially now 68 yards, the longest of his career. The senior from Dallas has to be pleased at the 29 texas has it john walker and walker for yard their first was doug holly number 60 a senior from highland park who is the most improved defensive lineman they have he's come out of nowhere this year to really anchor that defensive tackle spot well that's where it starts but watch the blocking here of this texas front right there you see the texas front the big surge there wasn't anywhere for Walker to go, but if, if SMU can get the penetration into that backfield, the, the, uh, they're going to have a distinct advantage. On a second and eight, Morshell. Boy, what a Ooh. bullet, and what a hit applied on the far side. Bill Boy Bryant really decked on the play. It'll move to third and eight. That was Jones, number one. Rod Jones, who is one of the many track men on this SMU team. They hit down here in the Southwest Con Conference, believe me, and you're going to see evidence of that as Rod Jones, number one, comes up and tattoos the receiver, Bill Boy Bryant, right there. That'll get your attention. SMU had the indoor and outdoor NCAA track champions. Three of the players are on this football team, all of them in the secondary. Third and eight. Duhon makes the catch, and that'll be a first down. 
An 11 yard pickup of Duhon, who had two touchdown catches last week, is really becoming very efficient for this Texas team. Duhon catching a 54 and a 43 yard touchdown pass against the Razorbacks. You know, he's caught. What, five passes and three of them have gone for touchdowns coming into this game. He averages 36.8 yards every time he catches the ball. And Texas wondered if Morshell could uh, throw the football. He's done it again. He now hitting the 11-yarder. In motion is Bryant. Walker. And Walker will make it to the 46-yard line. John Walker getting a lot of playing time due to the injury to Simmons and Terry Orr who went out of there earlier. We're going to take a look at, again at number 31 Anthony Beverly. He's lined up over the tight end. The play is run at him but it looks like he's a little bit confused. He's reading too many blocks. Can't quite get into the play. Doug Dawson gets a piece of him. He's not there to make the play but that's a play that he's going to have to make today for SMU to stop that sweep of Texas. Tom Linebarger checks in at defensive end for the Mustangs. Second down and six. Walker and Linebarger, who just came in, made the tackle. Two yards short of the first down. Make it third and three, to be exact. Clemson leading, and now a final, defeating North Carolina State. They haven't lost a game at home in Death Valley in 18. And we've been down there. We know what that's all I about. I can understand that. That is intimidating. Third and three. Marshall Beverly giving chase. Bill Boy Bryan, he got it complete at the 36-yard line. 15-yard completion. Football is a game of competitors, and Rob Marshall is one of those. People said he couldn't throw, he couldn't run. Somehow he finds a way to get passes like this to number 80, Bill Boy Bryant. There were a lot of comparisons all week long, Pat, made between Morshell and McElhaney. One thing that seemed to surface, many people thought Morshell might have been the better athlete of the two. And the better thrower. I think Rob says that, although Lance McElhaney is an incredible competitor as well. First down. Carter runs into his own man. Let's see who that is. At 65, Kurt McJuckin. And he ran into his own man there because of the tremendous penetration by number 98, Mitch Willis. And this is what SMU, SMU has to do, is penetrate. When you have a team that lines up in the eye formation, like Texas, puts their tailback at seven yards, what they want to do is hold their own at the line of scrimmage and let that tailback pick his way. But if you get penetration, like SMU is right now, and cause collisions in the backfield, there's nowhere for the tailback to go. No one has scored a rushing touchdown against SMU this year. Here is Ronnie Robinson, the fullback. He pulls his way inside the 35. Rod Jones, Ron Anderson combining on the stop. The Mountaineers, Don Nealon's team, suffering their first setback of the year. You know what that means now, Pat? There's only five unbeaten teams in the country now. We've got two of them right here. That's right. Inside the 35. Third down, eight. Beverly giving chase. Intended for Walker, but give credit to Anthony Beverly. He messed that one up. You're absolutely right. And this is one of the adjustments that two weeks off gave Bobby Collins his staff. You're looking at Anthony Beverly there. He's got a little smile on his face. He knows what kind of job that he did. But the, with the two weeks off, they said they were going to put pressure on with Anthony Beverly and their other outside linebacker. Georgia. Now, Kentucky, that's only their second loss. They went down to beat LSU and Baton Rouge last week, and the Bulldogs with only a tie. Ooh. East Carolina scared some people this year. This will be a 52-yard field goal attempt now by Jeff Ward. Ward is 4 of 5. He had a 22-yarder last week. He's going to have to hurry. It's good. tied this game up. That is the longest of his career. This is freshman year. Never a doubt. Never a <laughs> doubt. His daddy, an NFL official, was at practice yesterday. He tries to see his son play every Saturday before he goes to his game assignment. 
I like to watch these college kickers. You know, the pro kickers, they expect to do that. They walk off the sideline. These college kickers, they get excited about that. Well, tomorrow in the NFL, we're going to see a showdown in the NFC West between the 49ers and the Rams. 49ers are going to look to avenge an earlier 10-7 loss to Los Angeles. Our other feature game matches the Lions, who have won two in a row. Billy Sims are roaring back against those explosive Washington Redskins. There's other regional action, all starting with the NFL today. Ward after the 52-yarder. Boy, what a career he's going to have here, Pat. Four years. And he hits this one well. Donald Allen, a third-string quarterback, will down it. And SMU will start from the 20-yard line. Well, we said field position. Thus far, Whit Smith has kicked well, and both field goal kickers have done the job. The Mustangs from the 20. All tied up 3-3. Three to three. It's been 18 years since SMU has won a game in Dallas. They used to play in the Cotton Bowl, now moving over here to Texas Stadium. Lance McElhaney will have DeFard back in at tailback. He's number 21. And Michael Charles at fullback. Morris in motion, McElhaney, fumbled the ball, and SMU has it. Andrew Campbell, 67, the man that we highlighted as being the leader up there in that offensive line alertly came up with it. Well, this is a little problem that SMU has had. You know, they've only had one game the past three years where they have not fumbled the football. They had five fumbles against TCU this season, and here you can see last minute, Lance, the ball just knocked out of his hands, but an alert, number 67, Andrew Campbell, is there to make the recovery. That it looked like he had an alley to run if he'd held on to the football. Second down, nine yards to go. McElhaney delivering to Morris. He got it. He didn't catch much yardage with it. Maybe a couple at best, but that was a fine catch by the freshman from Cooper, Texas. Here's a look at Ron Morris. You know, he reminds me a lot of Kenny Jackson of Penn State. A great blocker, outstanding speed. We mentioned he has 10.300 meter speed, but he's a very good blocker as well. Well, that brings us to the end of this first quarter. Two field goals of distances of 25 and 52 yards. And this showdown is all even. <laughs> now remaining in college football, and Pat... We've had the big play. We've had the good kicking game. Any surprises in 15 not, minutes? Not to me, really, other than what the did, people did think Lance McElhaney could throw the deep ball. We saw, again, that you don't underestimate, uh, underestimate McElhaney or Morshell. Morshell proved last week he could do it, and he's coming out after him again today. Had the two long touchdown passes to Duhon. We start the second quarter. Third down and five for SMU from the 25. Morris goes in motion. McElhaney with Holly after him. A flag on the play. And that was almost picked off by Jerry Gray. Jerry Gray, the free safety, who seems to be everywhere. But a penalty flag was thrown just about the time the play developed. It's against SMU. Bobby Collins, who was a quarterback at Mississippi State, an assistant coach at the University of North Carolina. Declined fourth down. You probably could hear the illegal motion against the Mustangs. They'll have to kick. Whit Smith with a career-high 68-yarder. The last time will kick from the 12. And he hits it very high. It takes an SMU bounce. It may have been touched by Texas. Do you think it was? If it was, it'll be... It looked it like is. number one, Eric Jeffries. It looked like it hit him in the shoulder pad. As an end result, the Mustangs have the football at the 29-yard line. The football will take some funny bounces on this AstroTurf field. You're going to see the punt come up, hit the ground right there, and watch number one, Eric Jeffries, right there. It hits him in the shoulder pad and the helmet. And there's number 44, Kit Case, to recover the football for SMU. A big break. Kit Case, another one of those Highland Park kids out of Dallas. You coach and you coach and you tell guys to stay away from a punt like that, but they seem to run into him at least once or twice a year. With the 29, McElhaney on the pitch. Atkins can't get it. Texas has it. That's John Haynes, number 90. The Texas gets it back in a hurry. 
SMU is going to give it right back to him. It looks like the timing of this option play between Lance McElhaney and Jeff Atkins was disturbed by some penetrating defense. You see the penetrating defense right there. The ball was pitched. Jeff Atkins could not hold on to it. He had trouble holding an option pitch a couple of weeks ago as well and fumbled on a very similar type of play. You see the ball was out a little bit out in front of him. Again, more pressure by the strong safety, Richard Peavy, number 42. And there's the fumble and the recovery. Boy, those safeties come up. You mentioned that. Atkins has had trouble with the option all year long. He hasn't caught the ball that well. Morshell going deep. Epps intercepted. That is Russell Carter. And Carter with his fifth interception. He is only two career interceptions away from the conference record. Well, this is the third turnover in the row. But you're throwing against a very good defensive backfield and particularly highlighted by their free safety, Russell Carter. You're going to see the wide receiver run come right down the field here. Kelvin Epps, number 40, he's been a, their big play receiver, had an 80-yard reception against Auburn. The ball is thrown over his wrong shoulder, and Russell Carter playing a deep center field is there to make an easy interception. That's the very reason you mentioned to Pat that Carter is playing there. They want him playing center field where he can be around the ball. They used to throw away from him, stay away from his cornerback spot. You can be much more of a factor as a free safety. Well, that's five for the year. He leads the conference of the 25. Dupard, and he almost and maybe has the first down. As you're probably aware of, that interception against Morshell, the first of the year, and for that matter, the first against any Texas quarterback. They had thrown a combined 78 times coming into this game without an interception, but that has now come to a close on the interception by Russell Carter. That was a first down run by Dupard. Boy, he roared up the middle. Outstanding blocking by Thurston, Jackson, and Campbell. Heathcock has come in replacing Haynes at tackle. And Dupard up to the 37-yard line. He was all everything in Louisiana from New Orleans. Maryland leading Duke. Boomer Esiason, that is a final. Esiason against Ben Bennett. Let's look at him now. Now, Bennett had more yards. But Boomer Esiason has a better surrounding cast. Boy, they haven't won a game yet. Duke has really struggled. They moved the ball, but they haven't been able to stop a lot of people. Second down eight. Pitches back to Pard. Boy, Pat, that is a tough pitch to make. That pitch, you're, it's interesting you say that. I think that pitch, the way he does it, is just as difficult as throwing a 15-yard out. It takes incredible timing. And as I mentioned earlier, Lance McElhaney does that better than anyone in the country. It'll be third down and five. Let's take a look at Lance McElhaney as he comes down the line. He, well, she's not even look at the at the uh, at the back. He just flips that ball. It's right there. Reggie Departed takes the ball in easily for, for the play. That's remarkable. Bobby Collins says that hand-eye coordination that he has, he can do that. Third and five. That's behind Morris. Pretty good pressure up front that time by Texas. And so SMU will have to kick. Ron Morris open there on third and five. The ball was just thrown where he couldn't catch it. Whit Smith will be kicking for the Mustangs. 12.45 left to go in the second quarter. It's all tied up three apiece. This will not hit as well. The short man felt makes the fair catch at the 28-yard line. Texas will have it after a 36-yard kick that time by Whit Smith. Three to three, our score. West Conference champion SMU Mustang all even at the 1239 mark both teams kicking field goal Texas now has the football first down and stumbling forward that time was Mike Luck losing his footing let's go now to New York we have an update on that Notre Dame game here's Brent Musburger and Gary Arapar-Segan is all over Pat Hayden today. The Irish are about to end that USC domination. Alan Pinkett's third touchdown, 24 to zip. Let's go back to Pat and Gary. I tell you, Brent, I wish you could have seen Pat Hayden's reaction when that <laughs> score came up on the screen. Oh, my. Straight ahead again comes Mike Luck. Michael Carter, 74, made the stop. And it's going to come to a third down. 
There's Carter going out. He has such explosion as a shot putter, and Pat, they say it helps him as a football player. What you look for in a nose guard is some size. He is 6'2", he's 274 pounds, and a mean disposition, and he's got lots of that. He has a lot of that. <laughs> and a body to go with it. Yeah, that, you can back it up, I guess. Third down and six now. Marshall, he's going to fumble the ball. It's loose. SMU has it. T.D. Briggs, number 54, came up with a fumble recovery. Well, both teams are playing giveaway here. T.D. Briggs, another Highland Park player. We keep mentioning how many are in this game. Well, Rob Morrishell is back to pass here. Now, this is going to happen to some quarterbacks at times. He just, the ball is, is just taken by his arm by number 99, Cornelius Dozer, knocks it out of his hands, and T.D. Briggs was there. Here's a look at the nose guard. Now, this is Jerry Ball, number 34. Watch how he just dominates number 56, David Jones. Puts him six yards into the backfield. He's just a freshman, too, number 34. Here's McElhaney trying to capitalize. Pleasant, the intended receiver. Gray was there. That's secondary, always seemingly in position. Gray already has two interceptions. And Marquise Pleasant still keeping him nervous. Marquise. He was Marcus when he came here. He caught a couple of passes, and he changed his name to Marquise. It's going to be Marquise Plazon. <laughs> Second down, 10. Both quarterbacks now, Pat, have had the ball jarred loose from him. Marshall and McElhaney, and that'll happen when you try to scramble around and run that option. The key is the defensive front walls have put pressure on both quarterbacks. Second down, 10, and... We have a delay in the action. SMU has a timeout. That's their first. Both teams have two remaining in this first half. Three to three, our score in the showdown. For the timeout, they have a second down, 10 at the 29. Ron Morris goes in motion for the Mustangs. Give to Atkins. Atkins to the 20. Struggling, he needs another yard for the first down. Jerry Gray, oh, did Gray come up and straighten him up and denied him that first down. But again, Eric Parsegian mentioned in the game that they were going to put people in motion, try to so, try, try, try to loosen the support. But watch 57, Aaron Bolton, the left guard, come in and put a block on Mark Lang, the linebacker, giving Atkins some room to run. There is a penalty flag clear back at the 29-yard line. And the ball is going to be coming back. Atkins showing his explosiveness as he went up the middle that time. Illegal motion on the offense, still second down. Maybe that's the reason he exploded so quickly. <laughs> we'll take another look at, at Aaron Bolton, number 57, as he finds a way to open up a hole for Jeff Atkins. Right there, you see number two, Jerry Gray. He's the last defender to put, his, put the stop on Atkins. Bobby Collins told us that Atkins will probably weigh 215 pounds by the time he's a junior or senior. Tremendous legs on him. He does. He might end up being a fullback. <laughs> now, the fullbacks don't carry that often at <laughs> SMU. Right now, they reset the ball. It's going to bring up second down, 15 yards to go from the 34. Pleasant and Morris are in. Kreitz, Atkins in the backfield. Revis is the tight end. Three is Morris in motion. Play action. McElhaney. Morris dropped at the 26 yard line, and that's Gray again out of Lubbock. Red Acres used to coach in Lubbock. Must have helped in his recruiting of number two. Plays with those gloves. A lot of them are doing that. They feel it cuts down the injury, and all, of course, also gives them a better feel for the football. Well, particularly when you play on AstroTurf as much as the Southwest Conference teams do, you don't get the AstroTurf burns all over your hands. Gray comes out on a third and seven, and Craig Curry replaces him in the safety position. McElhaney. Bobby Leach defended nicely by Mossy Cave. There's no place to go with that. McElhaney with a very peculiar motion, but an effective passer just the same. Mossy Cade against Bobby Leach. He's all over him like a cheap suit here. Watch this. Bobby Leach now, and you're allowed to push him. He pushed him once. There is no room there to get the ball into number seven, Bobby Leach. Good defense by Mossy Cade. Boy, Mossy Cade, he loves to challenge you one-on-one. -on -one. Physical player. 42-yard field goal now coming up by Harrell. Harrell earlier able to hit one from 25 yards. 
And the kick is good. Jeff Harrell now is seven of 11 in the field goal department. Looks like one of those horses that Bob Fishman covered last week at Champagne Stakes. He did a nice job, didn't he? <laughs> That's our director, Bob Fishman. All right, let's check some scores while we get ready to kick it off here. Nebraska, after being 14-12, they did something about that, didn't they? Penn State upsetting West Virginia. The fourth-ranked Mountaineers, Auburn now in the fourth quarter, leading Mississippi State. Florida final. Hey, the Gators, not a lot said about them. They're unbeaten. And the Bulldogs, they're unbeaten only one time. Miami of Florida, we were so impressed with them. They just continue to move. It's going to be a showdown later between who, West Virginia, Miami of Florida, and Illinois leading Purdue. And Illinois has to play Michigan at home next week. Big game there. Harrell this time kicks it way short. Kevin Epps. Epps has some running room. Boy, that tackle, had it not been made, there would have been a long run. Tim Green was able to come up with it. Let's take this opportunity now to go back to New York. Once again, here is Brent Musburger. Jerry, this one will make Pat smile a little bit. His Trojans finally got a touchdown. Remember Michael Harper? He scored that phantom one for you last year. No doubt about this one. He hangs on to the ball. It's now 24-6. Back to Gary and Pat. Brad, I want you to know that's all Pat ever did was pitch to those <laughs> tailbacks. At least take, that's what he told me. Take that, Era. <laughs> First down from the 31. Here's Walker. John Walker who high jumped over seven feet that time long jumped about 10 15 feet in the air that's close to a first down ron anderson making the tackle you can see the problems texas is having mechanically and that's a little bit surprising when you think of fred agers how disciplined and well coached his football team is you know, they had trouble last week in the first half. They've been a third-quarter club, and we'll tell you about that when we get to the third quarter. They have been unbelievable there. Here's Rob Morshell on a sneak. Picked up for the ball loose as they unpile. SMU thinks they have it, waiting for the indication. And it is going to be the Mustangs' ball. I did not see it come loose. Fourth turnover now against Texas. It was just a simple quarterback sneak. He goes over Doug Dawson, the right guard, trying to pick up a first down, which he did. But again, the hard hitting the Southwest Conference, number 34, Jerry Ball puts his helmet in there. The ball pops out, and there's a host of SMU defenders there to make a recovery. They just stripped the ball away from him in all of that confusion in there. And as an end result, fourth turnover sets it up now at the 44 for SMU. Depard. Depard gets four yards. Both Depard and Atkins come off the ball and quickly. Craig Curry, Mark Lang combine on the stop. Depard was hurt early in the year, had a lot of shoulder problems. There's that turnover situation. Defense has played a lot. I don't know if Texas wants to rely on that third quarter too much. <laughs> You're right. Second down, seven. In motion is Adamson who checked in. McElhaney picks it. The fullback, Charles, did not see the ball. He did not see it, and Texas has it at the 40. I don't believe he was pitching it to Michael Charles. I believe he was pit pitching it to the tailback, but Michael Charles got in the way of the ball. Let's we'll see it. I'm anxious to see. Watch Lance McElhaney. Now, the fullback is actually supposed to be a blocker. He's here. He's supposed to go come down and block the, the support man. But again, penetration causes the, now that pitch was supposed to be to Reggie Depard, number 21. Have a Texas player down on the field, Bill Heathcock, number 68. Defensive tackle. Again, though, Pat, it shows you you're almost like a riverboat gambler when you're on that option. There was an example of it. So while they look over Heathcock, we're going to take a break. Six to three, SMU. 
option man to man. You're going to see one man on Lance McElhaney forcing him to pitch the ball. You see another man covering number 21, Reggie Depard. There's really nowhere to pitch the ball. Lance McElhaney thinks his fullback is the man. He is not. It hit, bounces off his shoulder for the fumble and the recovery. You know, looking back at the start of the year, didn't Auburn try to do the same thing? That's exactly what they did. And they took uh, uh, Texas took the pitch away by covering that pitch man man to man right in his face. We've had six turnovers in this game, four by Texas. They now have it at the 40. Fake the end around reverse. More shallow. Oh, is he hit on that play? The catch is made by Walker, and Walker is belted. First down, 18-yard pickup. Mitch Willis just unloaded that time on Morshell when he got rid of the ball. But give Fred Aker some credit. We've seen some turnovers here by Rob Morshell, but he still has the confidence in him to come right back with a pass. And it's a big play, and Rob Morshell responds once again. There's the hit that you talked about, Gary, and there's another hit. Oh. One other look here at John Walker as he catches the ball. Number one, Rod Jones comes in to give him a little tattoo. Boy, Rod Jones has had two big hits in this game. This is Walker getting outside. Walker to the 35 and dives for that front down stick, trying to pick up the first down. And he did. He has 60 yards rushing today. That's a remarkable statistic. 33 seconds, that's because of the turnovers. That is uncharacteristic of this Texas team. Their defense is normally on the field for three plays, and their offense takes over and controls the football. John Walker is having one of his better days. He's had those moments, as we mentioned earlier. There's your time in this first half at halftime. Brandon Era, highlights and scores. Get to look at that USC Notre Dame <laughs> game again. <laughs> Morshell, Ronnie Robinson. Flag on the play. Robinson inside the 25. SMU is indicating it's against Texas. And let's see if it is. It is. The illegal use of the hands. Michael Carter, the nose guard, was claiming that it was on him. He was being held. Wake Forest winning over Virginia. Wake Forest played well a week ago. All finals from back east. We've come to the halfway point of the season. Now we've seen so many outstanding defensive backs throughout the whole year, Gary. We have a lot of them on the field today. We should probably talk about why... Use some hands. Offense, still first down. We're finding so many. In my mind, I think what college coaches are doing are putting their best athletes at defensive backs because it's been such a wave in the passing game the last three or four years in college football. Bobby Collins said, though, he wasn't sure that that was justified, that people aren't throwing maybe the ball as much as they thought they were going to. However, today we're seeing a lot of it. First and 15 after the penalty. Terry Orr has come back in. He was out a while with ice on his knee. Morshell. Duhon and Russell Carter almost picked it up. And we have a penalty flag, a late one. And I think it's going to go against Mitch Willis, a late hit on Morshell. That was completely uncalled for, away from the play. Now we have a penalty going against Texas. He had crossed the, line, he of crossed the line of scrimmage. Boy, I tell you, the Willis it really looked like a late hit. Morshell, didn't it? Let's see if we can watch it. You're going to watch number uh, Will, Mitch Willis, number 98, as Rob Morshell rolls out to his right off a naked bootleg, a la Doug Flutie. The ball is away. You're going to see Mitch Willis, number 98, put the yeah, big paws on him. Pass by the offense. Lost him down. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Okay, that's exactly what happened. Rob Warshaw across the line. But here's the defensive secondary. There's Russell Carter in the middle of your screen. See Duhon, number seven, coming up. Russell Carter's right there to make the play. That's why he is an All-American candidate. Well, he's an outstanding performer. He holds the indoor record for SMU in the 440. Beat now second and 19 after the penalty, moving it outside the 40-yard line. Marshall, Carter again, and he almost had another one. He is everywhere. Bill Boy Bryant, the intended receiver. We are seeing some absolutely outstanding defensive play, particularly from the defensive backs. Take another look. Now, Rob Morshell sees his receiver at the top of the screen. Bill Boy Bryant, he thinks he's open. Watch, he runs right past the corner. So, Bill, so Rob Morshell says, I'm going to throw him the ball. But what happens? Here comes number 29, Russell Carter, right there to break up the play. Outstanding play by Russell Carter. You can see why he'd be such a great quarter miler, the way he got over there. The long 6-3 strides of Russell Carter, a second-team All-American, two-time All-Southwest Conference pick. 
Texas, third and 19. They're five of eight on third down. Orsell hit as he released the ball. Orsell's really taking a beating down there. Give credit that time to Dwayne Anderson, the strong safety. Also, Tom Weinberger. I don't think Marshall has been hit as much all year long as he has today. You're right. He is taking a beating. We, beating. we talked about how deep both these defenses were penetrating. Tough defense. And here's Marshall as he drops back. He does not see number 26, Dwayne Anderson, Oof. from the backside. Boy, that's where you get a big whiplash in a hurry, huh? Mm, that can give that you a headache. Side. can ruin your whole day. Delshick to kick. Last time he placed one beautifully at the five-yard line. He's going to try to do it again. Carter signaling fair catch. He'll let it hit, and it's going to go in for the touchback. 40-yard kick, and Texas now at the 20-yard line will set it up defensively. That Texas defense has been tested, and they trail now 6-3. to three. The Ralph Sampson here, Pat. I don't know if you've had a chance to see Ralph Sampson play when he's at Virginia. Well, next Saturday, the NBA returns to CBS, and it will mark the beginning of an era, the Ralph Sampson era. The three-time college player of the year will play his first NBA game for the Houston Rockets against Artis Gilmore and the San Antonio Spurs. Next Saturday, 3.45 Eastern. This is Atkins. Atkins picks up five. Jeff Atkins, as a senior at Fort Worth Eastern Hills last year, had four... 200 yard days three 300 yard days so you can see why he was so heavily recruited by everyone although they did lose Eric Dickerson as we mentioned at the top they have two outstanding tailbacks but they still lost the 80 yard run from Eric Dickerson but they probably gained something back with their two freshman receivers they say what they missed from Dickerson is how tough he was just a tough hard nosed player second to five fumble Atkins was the guy it was intended for did he get back on it Looks like he did. That might be some of that inexperience, Pat. He's had a tough time hanging on. Well, it seems like everybody has today. They're going to have to tape a handle on that ball. Atkins over 100 yards in each of the last three games. It'll be third down and eight now for the Ponies. Six to three, SMU with the lead. Haney. Fourth down. Ron Morris, the intended receiver. And with 527 left in this first half, Texas expects to get the ball with very good field position. SMU has not converted any of the third downs. They're 0 for 6. With Smith. He hit it well. Jitter Fields at the 33. And he's to the 43-yard line. Scott Ford making the tackle. 45-yard kick. A 10-yard return. The unbeaten second-ranked Longhorns trailing by three. More today than they've had any other game. But nobody's, the season. but nobody's really taking advantage of those turnovers. 16 to go. First tap. First down for the Longhorn. This is Terry Orr, the fullback, to the 46-yard line. Defensively, Cornelius Dozier, 99, and Clarence McDade is now in there. McDade is 91. They did not feel he was going to be eligible this year. He had to go to summer school. He got his grades up, and he's now starting to play a little more football for him. He's out of Waco. Second and seventh. Hillboy Bryant in motion. Terry Orr. Orr has a first down. Forward progress to the 44 of SMU. 10-yard pickup. Nice touch here by Rob Morshaw. You're going to see an outside blitz by the outside linebacker, number 99, Cornelius Dozer, who's right there in Morshaw's face. But he gets it around him, finds a way to get the ball to 37, Terry Orr, who picks up a couple of blocks and gets a first down. One of those blocks, McJunkin. He's really done a good job. He's kind of overshadowed by Doug Dawson, but he's played very well this year, the senior out of Dallas. Out 
a first down. And John Walker fumbled the ball. Believe it or not, it's loose again. Rod Jones had a crack at the recovery, but did he get it? Russell Carter comes out of there with it. Unbelievable. These are two unbeaten football teams, and I don't know whether there's too much emotion out there. They've still got the pregame jitters or what, but they're turning the ball over way too much. And so the sellout crowd here at Texas Stadium seeing a game of turnovers, a field position. Thus far, we've had three field goals. SMU has two of them. And the two-time defending Southwest Conference champions now have the ball at the 36-yard line. Five turnovers now against Texas. Dupard. Boy, he runs into a lot of trouble on that play. Craig Curry, Tony Edwards. Edwards playing a lot in there. He and Jeff Lighting have been sharing that middle linebacking spot. The thing about trying to call offensive plays when you're turning the ball over so much, you can never really establish any sort of rhythm. You run a couple of plays, you're trying to set something up. The next thing you do, you turn it over. So you're seeing some offenses that have been frustrated out here, both teams, because they have not been able to de develop any kind of the rhythm that, you, that it takes. Pat, I think you said it very well. You can be too high sometimes. Maybe they're just too emotional, not doing the things that they ordinarily do. Second and nine. McElhaney to Leach. That's Acorn, 17, stride for stride. Leach thought he had pass interference. That's the miracle man of 82, Bobby Leach. Beat Texas Tech in the last play. 79-yard touchdown strike against this very Texas team. It's a very physical game. Ooh. Tell you, as a back, you want to carry the ball, not block. <laughs> <Oof. My laughs> you got a block in this scheme of things. Third down and nine. That was the part. It was just unloaded on. Here's McElhaney putting it up. Pleasant and Pat. There was a big question mark coming in here. Could the speed of Pleasant and Morris get by the secondary? They haven't yet, except for that one play at the start of the game. But you're going to see Lance McElhaney keep trying. He sees the bump and run. He has a lot of confidence in these freshman receivers. The bump and run leads them to call an audible, a little go pattern. But right there, you see Mossy Cade all over Marcus Pleasant, Marquise Pleasant. There's nowhere to complete that football. Whit Smith has a rush on him. Doesn't hit it all that well. Felt fair catch at the 30-yard line. 33-yard kick. Let's take an opportunity now with our 6-3 to three score here to check other action. Notre Dame USC. I'm sorry to do this to you, Pat, but uh, we're going to look at this once again. The Trojans. <laughs> well, I, well, I remember they came back a few years ago in 1974. Who was the quarterback then? I think I know Anthony Davis was playing. A <laughs> and M leading Rice, Baylor. You know, uh, there's Wisconsin. Wisconsin, that'd be five wins for them. Northwestern, they've won a game earlier. Kansas, Trey, and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State might be the best team in the country at two losses. Back to throw on first down is Morshell. Or Terry Orr, an excellent receiver coming out of that backfield, but that just didn't hook up at all. Well, at the conclusion of this game and all our NCAA football broadcasts, Pat and I'll select a Chevrolet MVP from each of the teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school, and the MVP receives a certificate from Chevrolet acknowledging his outstanding performance. Oh, yeah. We'll be... Uh, <laughs> Comparing notes and come up with a winner and winners. Here's Orr. And Terry Orr, nothing fancy about that, but he has the first down. Just an old sweep that worked effectively. McDade making the stop along with Dwayne Anderson. Texas uses their fullback a little bit more than SMU does. In the SMU attack, their fullback is primarily a blocker. He rarely catches the ball. But in the Texas attack, their, foot, their fullback does carry the ball and is more of an offensive force. There's a fullback. <laughs> Bebo, what is it, the 14th? 12th, I believe. 12th, the 12th. I do my homework. Uh. <laughs> First down at the 43, Bryant in motion. Ronnie Robinson, close to the 50-yard line. Ronnie Robinson stopped by Linebarger. 
We saw earlier, excuse me, Gary, we saw earlier in the game that Anthony Beverly was overrunning plays, but he has adjusted. This time he comes in in a hard charge, but he sees the play, steps back in, and there he is able to help out on the tackle on Ronnie Robertson. Good adjustment by Anthony Beverly. This SMU defense, they were really suspect coming into the year. They had only three starters back. Beverly was the co-defensive newcomer of the year. But they have played so well, surprising people. Orschel trying to hit his receiver. Dwayne Anderson flying up. Luck the intended man. And it's third and four. And again, I keep bringing this up, but Morshell really got hit again when he released that pass. They're making him know that if he has that football, he's going to pay for it. From the backside that time again, it was Anthony Beverly, number, number 31. He has such outstanding speed, they're going to keep bringing him and putting the pressure on Morshell. Morshell's statistics, not that impressive. Five of 14, 66 yards, but last week, what, six completions? And That's right, two for long touchdowns. He just gets it done. Third down four. A throwback to Luck. Luck to the 40, 30, to the 25-yard line. Anthony Beverly over to make the stop, a 27-yard pickup by Luck. This is beautifully set up. Now, we have talked about how SMU's defense reacts, how quick they are. What do you do to, to try to attack that? You run some counter plays, and this is exactly what happens. He fakes to Luck, looks to his right, but he counters back on a little screen to Luck. There's no one over there. You see a couple of blocks right there. McJunkin getting the block, a big play by Mike Luck, but that's a very interesting call. There's the freeze of the block by Kirk McJunkin, number 65. Another block by David Jones. Good offense. Shows you the speed of that offensive line. Straight ahead comes Terry Orr. You know, going back to Mike Luck, they called him old reliable. He doesn't dazzle you. He just does everything very, very well. And we talked to Luck yesterday, and he had his game face on, didn't he? He certainly did. He was ready for the start today. We have a timeout now by Texas. They have one remaining in this first half with 1.56 left. Well, these two schools, we've just had a great visit to SMU. We've enjoyed our time in Austin. Let's take a look now at Texas and SMU, a visit to their respective campuses. For second time out, 1.56 left. Second and nine has been pointed out that if Texas somehow would penetrate that 20-yard line, it'd be the deepest they've been in SMU territory. It's been a defensive football game. With turnover. Marshall pitches to Duhon. That is going to be almost, no, it is not intercepted. <laughs> Carter had a shot at it. Michael Tucker taped hands and all. It eventually was caught by Morshell, and all that gave maybe a yard. You said almost. It was almost a lot of things. The number 74, he's right there in the middle of your screen. He is actually going to break this play up. He is the nose guard, believe it or not. But here's the pitch. It's a reverse to Brett Duon. Now, he wants a throwback to the quarterback, Morshell. But right there, number 74, the nose guard, 6'2", 274 pounds, jumps up. But Morshell did catch it, but was only for a gain of one. He can catch those shot puts, but he can't catch the football. Whew. Third down, they didn't gain anything. Third and ten. Marshall under heavy pressure. And SMU defensively has stopped him again. Number 98, Pat, has really played himself a game. Really around the quarterback in the crucial situations. Number 98 being Mitch Willis. I'm Gary Bender along with Pat Hayden, and now Texas will try to tie this game up. Jeff Ward, who earlier hit a 52-yarder, the longest of his career, will attempt one from 45 yards. Big rush. They hit the kicker. It'll be a penalty. The kick is good. Now, Texas can either take the three points or the penalty. Ron Anderson and Reggie Phillips, both of them, crashed into Jeff Ward, and I mean they went in him. And he's getting up slowly, as you can see there on your screen. The trainers are there to see if he's okay. It's one of the things. This SMU team is so fired up right now and so aggressive that you're going to face some penalties like that. So do you take the three points off the board and continue on? A classic coach's decision. 
Jeff Ward's all right, but he uh, had both men on top of him, and now Akers wants to refuse it, I believe, and take the three points. Well, that's what they say in the coaching book you're supposed to do. You never take three points off the board, and that's what Fred Akers is doing. And I don't know that he got that point across yet. Let's look at this again. Here's Jeff Ward, the sidewinder, number 23. The ball is off. There's number 22, Ron personal Anderson, foul. hitting him late. Ruffing the personal the power. Defense declined three points. Uh -oh. So we're tied up. I think that says something about Jeff Ward's concentration. And you can see he got a little shaken up there. So he is two of two today, a 52-yarder, this time a 45-yarder. I'm sure some people watching this telecast say, hey, why don't you go on? You've still got, what, 25 seconds? Try to get six, then come back and kick the field goal later. Well, you, we've seen so many times in, in, in football games where a coach has taken three points off the board, and it's led them into some trouble. Cal, earlier in the year, I remember that happened with them. Well, ultimately, they, it was against Texas A&M, but ultimately Cal won the football game, but they were lucky to do that when Joe Cap took three points off the board. At halftime, Brandon Era, I know they're watching that USC Notre Dame game for us. We'll have highlights of that, and we'll have scores throughout the country. You probably saw earlier West Virginia losing their first game. We're in the meat of the schedule now, aren't we? I guess you never count a Joe Paterno team out. Boy, boy, I guess. You know, we saw a string against Alabama as hot as you could get, and he did the same thing today against West Virginia. Well, like we said last week, so much of playing quarterback is, is confidence, and Doug Strank was a very confident young man last week. Now, they're going to assess the penalty after that three-pointer, so Jeff Ward will almost be in the end zone when he kicks this one. He'll be kicking from the 45 of SMU. How many freshman kickers have we seen lately that have done such a good job? And here is one of them. And so many of the, so many of them have been walk-ons, as Jeff Ward is. Question you have now, would you try an onside kick from this position with 25 seconds? It is not a bad idea, because even if you don't recover it, SMU still has a long way to go. It looks like SMU is expecting that. Texas has had four fumbles, an interception, one punt, and a field goal in the second quarter. They haven't had the ball all that much time on. There's the onside. Oh, what a hit. Whew. That was a hit. That was the tight end, number 82, Glenn Hubbard, who tried to field the ball, and he was abruptly stopped. And Texas has recovered. Remember, the ball has to go 10 yards, but if it is touched, by the opposing team, as you're going to see right here, as Hubbard comes up and tries to field the ball, and he is met right there by a host of Texas defenders. It bounces off his hands, and there Texas recovers and have, will have the ball on the 47. I know we've seen a lot of games with some hitting, but this may be right up amongst the top of the field. They are really hitting people out there this afternoon. There was an example of it. First down now with 22 seconds. Marshall, Duhon, and back there was Fred Nichols. 16 seconds. This was the same play that Duhon and Morshell connected on last week against Arkansas for a touchdown. It's a corner out. Watch Duhon at the top of the screen as he runs inside Anthony Beverly, the defensive end who was split out. He looks inside and then breaks outside. Actually, he did not give the quarterback enough sideline to throw that ball. You see, if he had come in a little bit more, you could have given Morshaw a little bit more room to throw that corner pattern. Second down, 10. Morshaw. Throwing deep. Bryant is down there. Jones is back. Incomplete. Boy, Rod Jones, who did not start, but who alternates on that left side with Reggie Phillips, has really been around the football. Like we said, we have seen some just outstanding defensive plays by both football teams today. Take a look at another one as Rob Morshell, with just a few seconds remaining in the first half, scrambles up the middle, gets to the outside using his athletic ability, goes deep downfield to Bill Boyd Bryant, but number one, Rod Jones is there to make the defensive play, and look, guess who else was coming into the play? Russell Carter. Another look from the end zone. The ball is up to the grabs. Now, Bill Boyd Bryant is 5'10", and Rod Jones is 5'10", as well. They both jump up, and Rod Jones knocks it away. Jones, again, an All-American performer on the SMU track team. On third down, 
drop. Duhon had a first down catch with a second left. Instead, now it's fourth down. Tough here as Brent Duhon drops this ball. It could have conceivably put them in field goal range had he caught it. The ball is well thrown by Rob Morrishell. He has opened the air on the break. The ball is well thrown. Duhon is probably concerned about keeping his feet in, takes his eye off the ball, and it drops on the carpet. Morshell now 6 of 18, 93 yards. He's thrown one interception. This will be the last play of this first half. Rick McIver is coming in at quarterback number 15. He is their strong arm, big guy, and they're probably going to take one shot for the end zone here. You know who else is coming in is Epps. He threw an 80-yard touchdown pass to him in the Auburn game. He falls down, though, and McIver's going to have to run with it. Ooh. Boy, is he belted. What happened was Epps fell down, the man he was going to throw to. We have a late flag now at the 45-yard line. He Look. may have been across the line of scrimmage and was. McIver comes in, and he gets greeted. <laughs> at Southwest Conference football. So we've had a very interesting first half. You mentioned right there at the bottom of the screen, Kelvin Epps. He's the man he wants to get the ball to. He is their speed burner. He gets knocked down on the pass coverage. McIver's in trouble. He steps up. He's got nowhere to go. He ultimately tries to get rid of, rid of it. Number 74, Michael Carter, along with Kit Case, a linebacker, is there to greet Rick McIver's first play of the game. So the penalty is refused. And Illegal this first half. Pass against the offense. Penalty declined. And so the first half ends. It's all tied up six to six. It's been a game of turnovers and field goals. Harold. Stats, as you mentioned earlier, but he, he had two big plays on touchdown passes to Duhon. So both of these guys can respond. And this is where it all starts. It's, it's really 0 0 right now. Winner of this game will have the inside track to the Cotton Bowl. This series started in 1916, and it's been 18 years since SMU has been able to win in Dallas. But Texas hasn't won the Southwest Conference crown since 1977. Now, what do you expect in the second half of play? Well, the interesting thing is the third quarter by both these teams. Texas has dominated all its opponents in the third quarter. They've outscored their opponents 66 to 3. Now, SMU's been pretty good in the third quarter as well. They haven't let anybody score on them. What you have to say is somebody's going to have to give up something, right? You're right. They both can't continue that success. 6 to 6, the showdown, a grudge match. You can call it a lot of things, but it should be a good second half of football. Getting back and ready and prime for what could be quite a second half. And Texas, at halftime, created a snowstorm on the SMU fans. It is not snowing here in Dallas. Harold kicking off. Epps will bring it out for the Longhorns. And excellent job out to the 22-yard line. All right, let's set now offensively some of the keys for the Texas Longhorns. Rob Borshell, he is 6 of 17 for 93 yards with one interception. Doug Dawson, we saw him uh, open some holes. McJunkin has been out on some screen passes, too. There is Kirk McJunkin, led the way for some big gains. And Duhon, he's had two catches for 23 yards. I think McJunkin has been a bigger factor in this first half, maybe than everyone expected him You're to be. right, he is overshadowed by Dawson, but he's played very well. All right. First down, the ball at the 22-yard line. Six to six are score. Mike Luck, Terry Orr in the backfield. Rob Morshell has Bryant and Duhon split out. Michael Carter making the stop on Morshell. And now, defensively, the key players for SMU. We saw Michael Carter play well on the center and deflect that one screen pass. Russell Carter, he's been all over the field, breaking up passes, intercepted a ball. He's been remarkable. And Anthony Beverly, he's been a big factor, too, chasing people from the backside, been in Morshell's face all day. Brings up second down and five. The ball at the 26-yard line. Morshell giving off to Luck, and Luck is going to be short of the first down, out to the 31-yard line. Larry Cox, a former Oklahoma player out of Richardson, Texas, and Doug Holly combining on the tackle. Line of scrimmage at the 31 and a half. Third down and still a yard to go. Mitchell and Jenkins, two tight ends now coming into the ball game on this short yardage play. 
We're having some difficulties with our audio, and we apologize. We'll try as soon as possible to alleviate that problem. Looks like Texas is having a little difficulty with their audio as well. <laughs> Doug Dawson looked to me like he fired. Let's see what happened. Illegal procedure against the Longhorns. I think you made a very good point as you look at Fred Akers that Rob Morshell, even though in that first half statistically was not a high water mark, doesn't let it bother him. How can he put it together here? That's all he's thinking about in the third quarter. Well, he certainly did it last week. Remember, he opened the third quarter last week against Arkansas with a big play to his wide receiver, Bill Boyd Bryant. So the penalty now makes it third and six. Duhon and Bryant split to the bottom. Bryant goes in motion. Morshell with a convoy leading, throws to Orr, and that'll be a first down. Terry Orr, a very smart football player. Reggie Phillips, five up to make the stop. An eight-yard completion, and Texas has their initial first down of the second half. Remember now, this is the Longhorns quarter. They've outscored opponents 66 to three. It's also been SMU's quarter. They have not allowed a point in the third quarter. So take that. Well, last week it was seven to three at half. And all of a sudden it was 24 to three as Texas defeated Arkansas. They just put them away in that third quarter. Morshell, a busted play. Beverly is there. I don't know if we can reconstruct this one or not, Pat. It looked like he wanted to hand off to Luck. Nothing doing, a loss of seven yards on the play. All the way back to the 28 yard line. where we were talking about 66 to 3. We talked about the competitiveness of both these quarterbacks and how we expect both of them to respond here in the second half. Loss of seven back to the 28 yard line. More shell to luck. Luck gets some of it back to the 33 yard line. Michael Carter again. Carter calling his name a lot along with Mitch Willis on the tackle. Take another look at the nose tackle. Michael Carter, you just mentioned him. It's he against David Jones. It's pretty much a standoff until Michael Carter falls off the block and puts a stop on luck. Perhaps round two goes to Michael Carter. Carter, they were concerned he might protect himself so he'd be ready for the Olympics, but he's played harder this year and at any time. Third and 12. Intercepted by Russell Carter. Pat, he is just absolutely sensational. That will be for him his sixth interception of the year. His 17th of his career. He is absolutely like a center fielder in the true sense of the word. He roams around back there. And that's, again, the reason they put him at, in the center field position at free safety. He read this play out. He's right in the middle of your screen, number 29. He's watching Rob Warshell's eyes. It's supposed to be a little pass over the middle. But Russell Carter, number 29, is there to make yet another interception. And another turnover, six against Texas. Line of scrimmage, the 35, first down. Morris in motion. Give to Depard, and Depard for two. John Haynes playing with a deep thigh bruise, the defensive tackle. Making the stop for the Longhorns. There's Russell Carter. That's two for his mother. He's out of Ardmore, Pennsylvania. He was an outstanding running back, and that again shows what you were talking about. Excellent offensive player. They moved him to the defense. And you know, conversely, as Penn State moved their outstanding All-American free safety to corner, Mark Robinson. They did just the reverse here at SMU, put Russell Carter at the free safety position to be more a part of the action. Second down and eight. Haney pitching back to Depard and Depard will make it to the 27. Craig Curry the strong safety up to make the tackle. Neither team has been able to establish much rhythm offensively but again this is what SMU wants to do is come down and option the football off, right off there off, off the linebacker Lang number 53. He pitches the ball to Reggie Depard who follows a couple of blockers for a gain. Third down and three. Morris will go down to the ball game. Two tight ends are in, Revis and Bolden. Power eye backfield. McElhaney options, and he did not get the first down. He needed to get inside the 25, and he's short of the 25. DeGreat and Ed Williams making the tackle for the Longhorns. 
Bobby Collins is going to have to make up his mind here on fourth and one. Looks like he's already made it. He's sending his kicker out. And so Harrell, who's kicked two field goals, with that play, Pat, SMU has not converted any third downs in this game. They're 0 for 7. We saw Texas do that against Oklahoma as well. So Oklahoma, Harrell. Oklahoma only converted one out of 13 against Texas. So it continues to be a battle of field goals. Harrell will attempt a 42-yarder, and it's not going to make it. That's, the first miss of the day. That snap was mishandled by the holder, number two, Don King. And it threw Harrell off a little bit. So Texas will inherit the football at the 26-yard line. Six to six, our score. Another look at the missed field goal attempt. Don King, he is the backup quarterback. He mishandles a snap. It's a good snap. He can't find the handle. Seems like all the players today haven't been able to. Gets the ball down late. Throws Jeff Harrell off just enough so that he misses it. And so at the 26-yard line, Texas hanging in here with a 6-6 tie. We'll have it. Duhon and Bill Boy Bryant split out. The last time they had the ball, Carter intercepted. More shell. Quick change of direction that time by Terry Orr showing some quickness. Out to the 32-yard line, Ron Anderson, 22, making the stop. Terry Orr's been plagued by injuries, Pat, all his career. I think what Fred Akers needs to do with his offensive team right now, Gary, is try to settle them down. They've had so many turnovers. They have to give the ball to their backs. They have to secure the football, pick up a couple of first downs on the ground just to get people settled down. Got to get the feeling that they don't think they can run on SMU. Trying to do some things, some new wrinkles, and as an end result, six turnovers in this game. This is Irvin Davis. Davis gets maybe a yard, two, that's all. For this SMU team, I don't think anybody thought they'd really been tested. Their toughest game up to this point had been Baylor. They played the Gramblings, Texas Arlington, and now they have proved that uh, their defense is going to be an excellent defense. Well, they only give up 68 yards uh, on the ground a day, so they are pretty tough up front. Third down, two yards to go. The three back eye this time. Luck, he's going to have to hustle to get that one for the first down. His second effort may have gotten it. Let's see. Big collision. Luck thinks he has it. This and is, he does. And Gary, this is just what Texas needed offensively, just to pick up a tough first down on the ground. They did it on three running plays. Here is Mike Luck over his All-American guard, Doug Dawson. Gene Chilton gets enough of the first down. But this is what they need to do is establish, again, look at Doug Dawson, number 66. Gene Chilton, number 74. Kirkwood Junkin from the other side pulls around. Just a big wave of uh, offensive line creating a hole for the first down. Pitch comes back to Luck. And Luck across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Carter, Keith Brooks combining on the tackle. You were mentioning Chilton. The SMU staff said they will never face a bigger offensive line than Gene Chilton, or one person in particular. They call him what, Gene Gene <laughs> the Coke machine. He wears a size 54 coat. <laughs> a little larger than yours. Can you imagine? From the 41-yard line, second down and six. Davis has come out of the ball game. Or back in with luck. Flag on the play. Morshell and living to the 45-yard line. Be short of the first down by two. Doug Holly giving chase back there. Going to have holding against Texas. They've contained anything that Morshell's tried to do. Sprint out cut back showing again the good positioning defensively by this Mustang team. Well you mentioned they have tremendous speed on defense like Texas defense is probably a little bit more physical a tough 4-3 defense like we said SMU's defense probably has a little bit better speed they want their linebackers to be able to pursue whereas again Texas linebackers big guys lighting's about 240 pounds want guys who can anchor the middle there. Did you see that Washington and Oregon tied for first 
what happened to the USC's and the UCLA's and some of those teams through the year. Oregon's undefeated in the Pac-10. They're playing well. Offense. Still second down. Lavelle Edwards. Boy, are they throwing the ball out of BYU. Steve Young, he's been amazing. They're averaging over 600 yards in total offense. After the penalty, it will be second and 19 for Texas. Seven minutes left in the third quarter, which has been the Longhorns quarter all season long. Bryant comes in motion. More shell, and that's overthrown. Good defensive work. Both Anderson and Carter were back. Bobby Mitchell, the tight end, the intended receiver. Now it's third and 19. Anytime the ball's been in the air, number 29, Russell Carter, has been there. Michigan remaining unbeaten in Big Ten play. Their only loss against Washington. And Illinois getting ready for that showdown in Champaign. So that makes that Michigan-Illinois game in Champaign something that's going to catch the attention of the entire country. Mike White with that Illinois offense has really done, has done a very nice job. He got a better defense this year, too. Third and 19, the pressure. Marshall will lose yardage to the 20. McDade got him, and I'll say it again, you just can't outrun this SMU team. You can't try to defeat them from sideline to sideline. They just have too much speed right there. As you look at Clarence McDade, number 91, he's right there in the middle of your screen. Rob Marshall under incredible duress again. And guess who's there? Number 31, Beverly, chasing him out of the pocket. Holly takes a little swipe at him, and here comes McDade, number 91. But Marshall really is under duress and pressure. Now Telchik has a pressure kick from the five-yard line. Six minutes left in this third quarter. His average is low, but he's had some strategic kicks. Hasn't been trying to go for distance. Fair catch by DuPard. Excellent field position. 38-yard kick. SMU has it the 42. And the two-time defending SC champions want to continue it. SMU, who has had only one first down since the opening drive of the game, needs to keep going here. Ron Morris, completion of the 45, and that'll nettle a couple of yards. Fred Acorn defending. That's about all they've been able to get is that short pass. Well, they came into the football game felt feeling they could throw the ball deep or short, but they felt that Texas was too tough on the inter intermediate routes. SMU with three first downs. Five thirty to go, third quarter. Bobby Leach is in now. He's split out along with Morris. Second and seven. ahead comes Atkins. He's going to be short of the first down to the 49-yard line of Texas. It'll be third and one now. Third down one for SMU. The South Eastern Conference. Let's look at some of the games. Auburn, they've lost only one game defeating Mississippi State. Florida struggling but beating East Carolina. Georgia still unbeaten. Defeating Kentucky who lost their second. And look at this, Pat. It is tight at the top. Georgia, Florida, and Auburn. And back here on third and one, going for the first down is Adkins. Indication is a first down. The Mustangs get it. Ty Allard made the stop. They're trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe there with Texas on third and one, and they were successful going over the left side of their offensive line behind Brady Burnett and Andrew Campbell. That is the first third down conversion by SMU. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Look at the seasonal average. They've been shut down, haven't they? They had to work for every yard. Wide open. Morris, he fumbled the ball. Jerry Gray has it for Texas. turnover against the Mustangs all of them fumbles but you really can't blame Ron Morris too much for that he is going to get popped here as you watch Lance McElhaney find him he is wide open they respect his speed he catches the ball there now he's going to get a hit right there the ball pops out 
Number two, Jerry Gray's there to make the... Here it is. There's the hit right there. That's number 60, Jeff Lighting, their middle linebacker. who has been a little bit quiet, but he was not quiet on that play. And guess who was there is Gray. We have a new quarterback for Texas. Todd Dodge is coming in. Dodge, the man who was the number one quarterback at the start of the year and then got hurt. Gives off to John Walker. Walker moves the pile for a couple of yards close to the 35-yard line. Todd Dodge coming in here, Pat, has thrown only four passes, completing one. He separated his left shoulder before the first game of the year, and he's been trying to play himself back into the lineup. Well, this may be his opportunity. So many people wait for the opportunity, and this is Todd Dodge's today. Dodge and Duhon were high school sensations together, Port Arthur, Texas. Straight ahead comes Terry Orr. Or behind that big forward wall off of McJunkin and Casey Smith on the left side to the 40. Third down. Third down and two. Substitution, Alvin Jenkins comes in. Now Luck comes in. A couple of tight ends as the wide outs, Duhan and Bryant leave. There's Harrell, who's hit two of three field goals. down two from the 40. Luck with an escort. Uh, it's going oh, It's going to be close. They're going to have to measure. Mike Luck had a lot of people in front of him on that power play sweep. Although Texas has had more success, Gary, when they tried to run right at them. They're a little bit big, bigger and perhaps more physical. We keep mentioning that SMU really has the speed to run from boundary to boundary. They've had success when they've gone right over Doug Dawson and Kirk Junkin, both of their guards, on third and two situations. And the indication is first down, Texas. second-ranked Texas Longhorns against the defending Southwest Conference SMU Mustangs. It's all tied up 6-6. Six to six. It's been a game of field goals and turnovers. And right now, Texas moving the ball here in the third quarter. Their quarter. All year long, they've dominated in this stanza. Now first down at the 42. John Walker out to the 47-yard line. And Larry Cox, 47, the inside linebacker with the stop. This is the first series of Texas where they've actually controlled the ball and line of scrimmage on first down, picking up four and five and six yards on first down. That's the kind of offensive team that Texas is. They can't be in a situation where they're facing third and six, third and seven, third and eight all afternoon. They should need to be in third and two. Todd Dodge, the quarterback on this series, engineering the move. Fine run that time by Walker. Russell Carter made the stop. First down, Texas. And this is the most impressive drive by this Texas team. Walker now with 86 yards on the day. Here we're going to take a look at the linebackers from SMU. Ben Wise and Larry Cox. Cox is number 47, Wise 41. They're going to fill in the holes. We said they had good speed, but the power of this Texas team opened the hole for John Walker that time. Adam Schreiber, the guard, came out and really put a nice block on for Walker. Their defensive coordinator, Bill Clay, says that guys up front have got to keep the blockers off of those two linebackers. Here is Walker. John Walker just inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. And John Walker had a high of 178 yards in one game, and he's approaching his second 100-yard day of his career. And even more importantly for Texas, again, four, down, four yards on first down. That's what you have said about Texas. They get that initial yardage on that first down. Changes the whole complexion. That's their ball game. At the 39. Second down, six. Dodge to Walker again, and he barrels forward for another first down. Good leg drive that time. Ben Wise, Russell Carter on the stop. And this Texas team relentlessly moving the football. And it is, isn't it interesting how sometimes a change of quarterbacks will come in and pick a team up. As we watch number 74, Michael Carter, the nose guard, be controlled there by David Jones. That one goes to David Jones, the center. I stand corrected. They did not get the first down. It's third down, less than a yard. Irvin Davis comes in for the short yardage call. Walker, and he's 
tripped up in the backfield. Did he get it? Dwayne Anderson, 26, was there, blitzing. Michael Carter, Mitch Willis. You're right. There's a picture of Dwayne Anderson. He's been penetrating all day long. It is fourth down. They didn't make anything. There was nowhere to go. When you get that penetration up on the front of the line of scrimmage, it's very difficult for those tailbacks to pick away and find a hole. This is a big play. This will be the last play of this quarter if they get it underway. He didn't get it. Reggie Phillips led the way defensively. Fourth and one, you said it was a big play. The SMU defense responds. Watch number five at the bottom of the screen come up there, go underneath the blockers. Again, penetration into the backfield. There's nowhere for John Walker to go. This is just a test of determination. Who wants it more? Who wants the Southwestern Conference crown? Right there, fourth and one. That's the end of the third quarter. Our score is six to six. Texas SMU is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. New fans applauding the fact that the Mustangs have held that record of not being scored upon in the third quarter. They did not allow a touchdown. Now they've got to get their offense rolling. They have it at the 35-yard line as we start the fourth quarter. McElhaney intended for Morris. Ron Morris defending was Jerry Gray. SMU pad has only 57 yards since the first quarter, so it's been the SMU defense that's kept them in this one. McElhaney needs to get the hot hand. It'll be second down, 10. And conversely, Texas' defense needs to come up with a, yet another turnover to give their offense an opportunity. Lance McElhaney had thrown seven touchdown passes in the first five games. Give to Depard. Reggie Depard may have gotten a yard. So a third down coming up now. The Mustangs. Coming into this ball game, we're at a school record pace offensively. But when you run into the top-ranked defense in the country, somebody's going to have to stop something, and it's been Texas doing it. Here's the difference between last year's SMU team. On third and nine, they could give the ball to Dickerson or James and, and count on them still being able to pick up nine yards running the football. They have not been able to do that today. Third and nine, they have five defensive backs in. Marshall, that's Bolden, the tight end. Williams and Holly put good pressure on for the defensive end spots. Well, that was exactly it. The reason this pass was not completed because it was because of the pressure. But watch Ricky Bolden with tight end 101 against Craig Curry, the strong safe. Now he's open, but you, you can't see last Lance McElhaney, who was under tremendous duress from the defensive front. Whit Smith the kick. Left footer gets a very high, not exceptionally deep. Belt at the 31 with a fair catch. And Texas now, after a 33-yard punt, has it at their own 31-yard line. We're all even, six all. Large rushing by the Mustangs of SMU. They average about 250. And on the other hand, Texas has held teams to 94, so that's about right on for them. That's what we expected. From the 31, Texas has the ball. John Walker, and as he hit, oh, Dwayne Anderson, the other part of that safety tandem back there. We talked about Russell Carter. What about Dwayne Anderson and Pat? It may come down to the kickers. Well, they've kicked very well today. We're, we're, we're marching toward that point as we look at Jeff Ward, the Texas, kick, Texas kicker. He's been a clutch kicker all year long. And it kicked his longest 52 yarders. Jeff Harrell is two of three. The last one, he had a bad hold on it. Todd Dodd still the quarterback. They're going to lose yardage on this play. Walker smothered by Doug Holly, 60. And they're going in reverse order here. Boy, it's now third and 15. We're taking a look there at Doug Holly, number 60. Again, he is penetrated. He is back in the Texas backfield. As soon as that offensive guard pulls, Doug Holly, Doug Holly fills the hole and follows the offensive guard. He's in the backfield, causing uh, trouble, disrupting rhythm. 
Doug Holly out of the Detroit, Michigan area. Third and 15, Bill Boy Bryant in motion. Dodge wanting to throw. Going deep, Mitchell wide open. And Pat, that's the problem when you got a new quarterback coming in, trying to get everything hooked up. He had everything set up for him, but overthrew him. And you see the disappointment there on Bobby Mitchell's face. You're right, Todd Dodge did have him open. It was set up a play action fake. They've been running the ball with some, with some success here, but here you're going to see Todd Dodge step up into the pocket. He gets the ball off. Mitchell was wide open, but he's a little excited. He puts too much juice on it, and it goes right over Mitchell's head. Had an opportunity for a big play. Maybe a game difference right there. Dodge upset it himself as Telchik doesn't hit it that well. But it's taking a Texas bounce. Getting away from it was Depart, and that will be downed at the 25-yard line. So now it's a Mustangs opportunity. 48-yard kick. What a showdown. After that kick, SMU has it at the 25. All tied at six. Kreitz and Atkins behind Lance McElhaney. Give to Atkins. James McKinney in there. Now Texas making a lot of changes defensively. McKinney, Woodard's in there. Buck Cannon. Let's look at the top 10. See what happened today. In Nebraska, that's 69. They've had a lot of 60 scores this year. Penn State, the big upset. Auburn continuing with only one loss. Florida over East Carolina. The Gators are growling. And how about the Bulldogs? Them dogs. <laughs> how about them dogs? That was a big one. Michigan with no time left, winning on a field goal. McElhaney trying to hit Morris. He didn't see the ball. Cade defending. He thought he was shoved, I believe. Morris felt that Cade had interfered with him, and McElhaney pleading his cause. Still doing it, but to no avail. You've been in that situation, I imagine. It, it doesn't work too often. Let's take a look at it, though, as you watch Ron Morris against the defense. Now, Lance McElhaney thought he was going to run a little go pattern because on bump and run, that's what the receiver is supposed to do. But, the, but Ron Morris misread the, the bump and run coverage, ran the wrong route, and we had some, a problem there. But they were complaining about pass interference. They're an experience showing up a little bit. Third down, 10 now. McElhaney to Morris. He and Cade running down the field. A little collision, no flag, and it's fourth down. Ossie Cade has met the challenge back there all afternoon long. He the sure reason has. they think he may be the best in the country. A little high five. <laughs> we got up there with Tony Edwards. A high five. Maybe that's why they wear those gloves. All the high <laughs> fives are doing. Whit Smith. Another pressure kick for him. Oh, it's almost blocked. Catch is called for by Texas. They have it at the 38 after a 37-yard kick. So a field position situation. Texas getting the better of it on this last exchange. Four fumbles, two interceptions, and they went on fourth down and didn't get it once. Now they have it, and Ronnie Robinson, the fullback, advances it out to the 41 and a half yard line going to happen here. You're going to come down to a field goal, maybe a big play like last year, that 79-yard deflection that went for six. Or it might end up this way, 6-6. Six, six. Neither one of these teams want to go back tight, I'll tell you right now. You're absolutely right. Take a look at Jeff Ward. He's thinking about it. The rest of the top 20 now is what's happened around the country. Todd Dodge giving off to Luck and Mike Luck. Just across the 45 to the 46, and it's going to bring up third down. Ron Anderson out of Leveland, Texas, made the stop, and it's third down two. This is a situation of third and twos that Texas offense wants. But they haven't been able to string three or four of those together. Show you how the hitting's going on. We're just going to lay out, listen to the play in the trenches. Now we were going to, and now they call the timeout. The best laid plans, right? <laughs> we will in a moment. Timeout called by Texas, 10.53. The Longhorns have two timeouts remaining. Peril standing by. He'd like to get a crack at a game-winning field goal. Third and two. Let's listen. Davis 
Prescott outside for the first down. He is excited. Let's take a look at Irvin Dent Davis, third and two. This is the situation, as we mentioned, that Texas likes. He's going to follow Doug Dawson, number 66, who puts on a nice block. But then he bounces it outside, breaks a couple tackles. He knows where the first down marker is. He knows that the Southwest Conference Championship is on the line. He has been a money player. He was their designated touchdown scorer a year ago. He scored two this year. First down now at the 47 of SMU. Now dodge to Davis. Davis with Holly on top of it. 10 minutes, 41 seconds left. Now, as far as field goals are concerned, Ward has kicked one of 52, one of 45 yards. With 10 minutes left in the game right now, in my mind, is up to the offensive line of Texas. Second and five. Luck just short of the first down. But again, very short yardage for a third down. They had third and two earlier, and they're coming down to a third and one here. Carter Anderson combining on the stop. I believe this is only the first time in the ball game where they've had two successive uh, situations where they've been third and one, third and two. Fred Akers. He calls the plays. He feels at certain times he has a feeling for the game. Otherwise, he'll take it from Ron Toman upstairs, and Robert Brewer will signal him in. And that's much different from Bobby Collins, who lets his offensive coordinator call the plays. Third down. It's going to make a two. A long one, anyway. Here is Luck. He's got it. To the 28 yard line and this may be a drive for a national championship and most assuredly a southwest conference championship the offensive line i said it's up to them perfect johnson number 65 is going to pull he is right there on your screen he knows the southwest conference championships on the line Irvin davis knows it's on the line and michael luck does as well line of scrimmage the 28 yard line since Todd Dodge has come in, he's only attempted that one pass, but they seemingly have rallied a little bit behind him. Sometimes the changing quarterbacks can give you an emotional, a spiritual lift. SMU going clear back to the Arkansas game has not given up a touchdown on the ground. That's eight games ago. And they kept their string alive of not being scored on in the third quarter. Two gritty, hard-nosed teams. Bobby Collins, this is his second time around in this series. <laughs> It'll be a lot gray, a lot more gray on that hair later on, huh? You know, I was struck with talking with both co coaches. Bobby Collins, the word most out of his mouth seemed to be pride. The word out of Fred Aker's mouth seems to be competitive. Or be positive. He's really into employing that positive theory. There's Robert Brewer right behind Fred Akers. He was a so. quarterback last year. Saw him before the game. He said, the whole state's going to be watching you today. <laughs> He was excited. Here is Davis for the 25, maybe inside. Interesting, on first down, Texas has gone into a goal line offense with two tight ends and a wing back. Perhaps they're setting that up, the four down zone here where they can run the football. They're going to play mash football with SMU right here. Jerry Ball, just a freshman, the nose guard on the tackle. Kit Case helping at the 25, second down, seven. California leading UCLA out west. Two tight ends in again. Davis again. Davis, a workhorse on this drive, moving the ball to the 22. Mitch Willis, 98, made the stop. Wonder what's going through Jeff Ward's mind right now. Well, with a third and four, if they don't get it here, he's going to come on to kick a field goal. pressure for a freshman. Luck. Luck has the first down and then some inside the 10. The offensive line takes it into their own hands again. Again, perfect junkin'. Casey Smith on the left side, Irvin Davis clearing the way for Mike Luck for another first down. 
This is tough, rugged football. This is Southwest Conference football. Not very pretty and not very fancy, but effective. And Luck now was 77 yards. First and goal at the eight. Davis. And Davis bent backwards by Kent Case, 44. Going to bring up second down. Man shaken up now. That's Anderson limping off the field for SMU. Their fine safety. Boy, is, is he played well today. Keith Brooks, 13, replaces him. This is the 11th play of the drive. Starting from their own 38. Second and goal from the seventh. There were three blue shirts over there around Bobby Mitchell third down goal there was nobody fooled he was trying to throw the Bobby Mitchell on a delay there's the defenders as you look at them he's trying to get his tight end snuck in the background the play action fake they've been running the play action all day long running the ball so effectively but Todd Dudge is a smart thing here he is not going to get caught for a sack he throws the ball up and out gives his tight end a chance but no chance for an interception good play by Todd Dodge Texas is going to call a timeout they have one remaining with 7.08 left in this game. When they come back, it'll be third and goal at the seven. It's all time. The seventh, the Southwest Conference title quite possibly on the line. A trip to the Cotton Bowl and a chance to still come the 1983 national champion. Fred Akers had asked for the timeout. Bobby Collins reasserted his defensive team. If they don't get it here, Jeff Ward, a freshman, will be called on to kick a field goal. statistically, but they'll come up with a big play. Twelve to six. Jeff Ward probably relieved. He didn't have to kick that field goal. Now to try the point after. And the Longhorn now lead it 13 to six. What an impressive drive. 62 yards. 12 plays. Let's look at the touchdown. Third and goal on the seven. SMU decides to come with a blitz. Watch him. Watch the pressure. There's number 26, the strong safety coming in to blitz it. It's a quick pass from Todd Dodge to Bill Boyd Bryant away from the defender. Fred Nichols, number 25, really did not see the ball. The ball was well thrown away from him. But a very good drive. The key to this drive, Gary, was that Texas was in a situation they were in third and one, third and two, for two or three times in succession. That was the first time all afternoon they had done that. That is their game. And they just towed it up and went after it. It was hard-nosed Texas football. College football. Bill Boy Bryant, his second touchdown catch of the season. So now 
SMU has six minutes and 59 seconds left. That high five may be symbolic of the drive to the national championship. Personal challenge by everybody met in that offensive line. It was met, a personal challenge. Played beautifully. That's where that positive thinking certainly came into play. That's what Fred Akers espouses. Now the penalty roughing the passer being assessed after this. So kicking off from the 45 of SMU will be Jeff Ward. And SMU again is looking for an onside kick. I'm not going to get it. That ball, did it make it in the end zone? It did. It almost did go in. <laughs> So they'll bring it out to the 20 for the touchback. That almost was a disaster for SMU. There's the boy, Bill Boy Bryant. His daddy was his coach in Dublin, Texas. And they regale us with all kinds of stories about his daddy and Bill Boy Bryant and some of the rivalries they had. An outstanding golfer. Right now he's an outstanding receiver. Had a 56-yard catch last week against Arkansas. So Texas, with the top-ranked defense, would like to stop it right here. The 6.59 left, and they're protecting a 13-6 lead. Flag on the play. Dupard. Dupard's had some running room. That'll be a first down run. Greg Curry over there to make the stop. A 16-yard pickup. It looked like Texas had fired off. Yeah, Tony DeGray, number 99, looked like he was offside. It'll be declined. Going to take a look. There's the official signal offsides on Texas. We suspected that. Tony the great number 99 right there. Here it is. Comes an option play. The ball is pitched. Now they've had some trouble pitching that ball, but this time it was beautifully done. Dupard picks the ball up, gets a couple of blocks and a big first down. That's the longest run of the day for SMU. I think they crossed him up. It, I think Texas felt they'd be throwing and it, it worked very effectively. Well, they still have plenty of time. There's nearly seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter. When you're running an option play like that, as well as Lance McElhaney can, you can and create one-on-one -on -one situations like that, you can catch up. That shows you some of the action today throughout the country, the top 10. First down run at the 36-yard line. McElhaney complete. That's the fullback, Michael Charles. Ty Allard knocks him out of bounds. 6-29. And SMU somehow, some way, hoping to, to tie this up and have a chance to win it on a two-point conversion. It's a concern. SMU offense is rolling. 17-yard pickup to the 45 of Texas. Don't ever underestimate Lance McElhaney. And here's the young freshman receiver, Ron Morris. Again, you have to respect his speed, which they do. He is open there. They give him a little bit of a cushion. Remember, they're protecting a lead. He picks up the, the, the reception. Again, another first down by SMU. He had two back-to-back 100-yard -back days. Boy, Morris is going to be driving people crazy the next three years. to Morris again to the 36 pick up of eight maybe nine on the play Whitey Jordan the interesting thing he said about Lance McElhaney is he forgets the bad plays. so many quarterbacks they let the bad plays weigh on them now Lance has had a couple of situations where he's fumbled the ball but he's hung in there here it is the game is on the line the Southwest Conference Championships on the line there's five minutes left in the fourth quarter and he's playing his best football second down two Pitches back to Pard. First down to the 25. All of a sudden, SMU's putting it together. A 12-yard pickup. SMU is meeting the challenge as well. Once more, the option play. Lance McLean beautifully pitched to Reggie Dupard. A good block there by his tight end, Ricky Bolden. 
but it's tick for tack, and there you see SMU responding to the challenge that SMU that Texas has given them. One more look at Reggie Depard. Breaks attack, strong runner. First down at the 25. 440 left in the game. 13 to 6, Texas. Depart again, and he picks it to the 17, and he had a possibility of even bigger yardage there for an instant. Right up the middle, where you don't normally run against the Texas defense. Albert, Jerry Gray combined on the stop. Second down, two yards to go. Bobby Collins, they came from behind time after time a year ago. They'd like to do it again. It's called character. These two teams have battled, and they have really come out here respecting each other. Give to Kreitz. Kreitz didn't get anything. Mark Kreitz, John Haynes, and Allard in there to make the stop for Texas. Third down. Tony DeGreat getting up. DeGreat. Big, strong, anchor type guy. You just anchors himself in there. Third and two. Possibly SMU's last series. Two downs to make two yards. 3.25 left. Third and two. McElhaney cutting, and he did not get it. Edwards, quite a tackle on that play. There he is. Third and two. Lance McElhaney trying to meet the challenge. I think if he cut right there, he might have had a chance. He cuts a little bit late. The Texas defenders are there to put the stop on, and now it's fourth and one. Fourth down one, and SMU has a timeout. So the Mustangs use their first. And Lance McElhaney has been in a lot of pressure situations. Has a big one now. Fourth down, one when we return. 2.52 left in the game. The Horns leading the Mustangs 13 to 6. Time to talk to him. Fred Akers, his defense now facing a fourth and one. Two days ago, Bobby Collins said on fourth and one, he is liable to do anything. It's that kind of game. He also told us he likes to run behind Campbell. Their left guard. To their left side. <laughs> Depard, he's got it. He's going to take it in. Touchdown. discuss what they're going to do when they go for two. Bobby Collins said he wanted to run over Andrew Campbell and Grady Burnett, and that's exactly what he does. He has a power backfield. He gives the ball to Reggie Dupart, and he follows Andrew Campbell and Burnett. A big play, breaks a couple of tackles. Both these teams have met the challenge. College football is a game of challenges, and these two teams have met the challenge. Another look on the left side of the offensive line. There's number 67, Campbell, just burying his man. Dupart, a strong runner, keeps his balance, bounces off a couple of people. He knows what this game means. We saw some of the high fives on the Texas side a little earlier. And here you're going to see a few on the SMU side. Dupart now with 98 yards, but on that drive, he carried four times for 52 yards. He was their man. Now, two-point conversion, what are you going to do? Well, you have an option of moving the ball anywhere between the hashes. SMU has decided to move the ball a little bit to the left, not entirely over to the far hash, but a little bit to the left with a right-handed quarterback. It's a situation where you might want to roll out, give the Lance McElhaney the option of throwing or running it in for the two points. 
Southwest Conference title might be hanging on this play. The card in motion, McElhaney, and Texas leads it by one. That was Jerry Gray again, but what really caused it, that was a penetration on McElhaney. You're absolutely right. And Eric Holley and Lance McElhaney were going after it right there, after the play. Take a look. They put the card in motion. This is exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to put Lance out on the corner with the option of running or throwing, but he really didn't have a chance to run because of so much penetration. Number two, Jerry Gray met the challenge again, knocked the ball away from the attended receiver, Dupard. You got to give a lot of credit to Great and Haynes inside. Look at him pushing you know, people out of there's there. There's PV, there's Lang, number 53, putting some heat on Mac McElhaney. So Texas holds. There's still 2.46 left. What a football game. Getting the two-pointer, SMU trails by one. Texas expecting the onside kick. They have that receiving team that they put in on a special occasion like this. There's Jerry Gray who batted down that two-point attempt. Whit Smith will approach the ball. It's loose. And Texas has it. The Longhorns have it with 2.46 left. Stephen Braggs, number six, was the man who came up with it. Well, this is a bitter rivalry, and this type of game just had more fuel to that. They've had a tremendous series over the last four or five years, haven't they? Look at the traditions, the teams, the heritage. And Texas, ranked number two with a one-point lead now. Todd Dodge giving to Luck. Luck gets inside the 45. Both teams have one timeout remaining. Ben Wise made the tackle. Texas will just try to kill as much time as possible. 2.30 now left. Texas has a difficult assignment next week. Texas Tech is unbeaten in this conference. Again on second down and six, and he's going to be short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. Wise made the stop. One timeout remaining for each. Third down, two. And that Texas offensive line really took control here in the fourth quarter, Gary. Pat, we want to thank the SMU people, athletic director Bob Hitch, coach Bobby Collins, the sports information director Bob Condren from Texas, athletic director to Los Dodds, football coach Fred Akers and his staff and the sports information director, Bill Little. On a third and two, and I don't think they got it. What a surge defensively. That was Anderson, who was hurt earlier, who led that, number 26. Texas bringing up fourth down next week will be in Champaign Illinois Michigan against Illinois both of them unbeaten in the Big Ten that will be coast-to-coast -coast coverage that will start at 12 o'clock Eastern and also we're going to feature Bo Schimbeckler the coach of Michigan we're going to follow him around as he prepares for that battle against the fighting Illini better not follow him too closely they'll be with him every step of the way That'll be tough to do because ball moves <laughs> around a lot. They're going ready then. I don't think they'll get any better in this one today, though. But that game now shapes up as the battle to take over first place the Big Ten. We're going to have a delay of game now. 
against Texas. So they had a fourth down one. And looking ahead tomorrow, NFL action, 49ers and Rams. Also, we're going to have the Detroit Lions who are rolling very well against the Washington Redskins. We understand a very special feature coming up on the NFL today. Brent spoke with Donald Trump, the owner of the New Jersey Generals. Talked about Don Shula, Marcus Dupree, and the challenging the NFL owners in a money war. It's all tomorrow. Delta kicking. Got it very, very high. SMU gets away from it. It takes a Texas bounce. They're milking that for all they can get. <laughs> oh, my. What a job by Telchik. And it's to up there. And so SMU is 95 yards away with a minute seven. It's really been amazing how it's been such a defensive football game. When the chips were on the line in the fourth quarter, both offenses came up with big touchdowns. The nation's longest unbeaten string right now in jeopardy. 21 games without a loss, this SMU team. They got a minute seven to keep that from ending. Second time that SMU today has started from the five-yard line. Back Mulhaney, intended for Morris. It's interesting, after what happened last year, you don't see too many people leaving the miracle play with Bobby Leach. It's about what it's going to take right now is a miracle for SMU. One minute, three seconds left. We're talking about Bobby Leach. He just came into the lineup. There he is, number seven. Thanks to our statistician, Mike Swanson, our spotter, Steve Bear, and what a job by producer Rick Lasavita and our director, Bob Fisher. Thanks, guys. Second down, 10. Jerry Gray intended for Pleasant. Can't say enough about this defensive secondary of Texas. There's something. That stops the clock with 58 seconds. Third down. Holden will bring the play in from his tight end position. Put to the top. Big pressure on McElhaney, sacked for the safety. Ed Williams. West Conference title, and here he, he does his part. He puts the heat right there on Lance McElhaney for two points and a safety. Big play. They've been pressuring Lance McElhaney all afternoon long. Another look at Ed Williams. Never had a chance. Interesting story that develops here as you look back at last season for SMU, Pat. Against Arkansas, they tied them last year 17 to 7. In that game, they went for one and went for the tie. Today, they took the route, they took the courage, and decided to win it. I think you always try to go for the win in college football. I think that's very, very important. You also, the other interesting thing is this may, in fact, be Bobby Collins' first loss at SMU. And again, the longest unbeaten streak at 21, wavering now. A Texas defensive line on two occasions. Remember the two-pointer, how they surged and made McElhaney hurry up? And then you saw the last play. Absolutely. They have really been able to do the job. <laughs> Maruna is not too happy, nor are the Mustang <laughs> followers. Onside attempt. Here, here. 
Let's untangle this. It hit an SMU man, so they'll put the ball down right there. And that's where Texas will have it at the 26-yard line. All right, let's go back to New York. Here is Brent Musburger. All right, Gary, well, we've got a moment. Let's get everybody up to date with the Big Ten because we've got the big showdown on CBS on Saturday. Michigan beats Iowa 16-13 on a field goal in the closing seconds. Illinois stays even in that conference, 35-21, and at high noon, we'll have Illinois and Michigan. Ohio State over Michigan State, 21-11. Wisconsin beats Indiana 45-14, and Northwestern upends Minnesota. They tore down the goalposts at Dyke Stadium. And what a courageous thing Coach Bobby Collins did there at SMU. They may have put their whole season on the line going for that win. Contrast that with a year ago when they played it safe against Arkansas and just kicked the one-pointer. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. 15 to 12. You have the option of punting or place kicking after a safety. They tried the onside kick. It backfired on him. Todd Dodge now just killing the remaining time. Brent Musbarker did make, make the point that Bobby Collins went for the win. And again, that is very, very important in college football, attempting to win. SMU uses their last timeout. Okay, we're going to go back to Brent, update some more information in NCAA football. Brent? All right, Gary, thank you very much. Let's get you back to the scoreboard now. We've got in the Pac-10 working Washington over Oregon, 32-3. They are in the fourth quarter of this game. BYU over San Diego State, 33-12. They are in the fourth there. Again, these are our partials. Stanford has come from behind over Arizona. What a shocker that would be. 24 to 20, and California all over UCLA, 16 to 7. They are in the fourth quarter of that game. And the Air Force beats Utah, 33 to 31. A wild shootout in the WAC. Wyoming over Colgate, 49 to 29. What's Colgate doing out there in Laramie on a Saturday afternoon? And Weber State losing big to Nevada Reno in the big sky, 41 to 3. And finally, also out west, Montana losing to Idaho 28 to 24. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. Disappointed SMU. Texas has won three national championships. Taking a big stride forward here today. For what they hope is their fourth. The last one they won was in 1970. Bobby Collins and the Mustangs have no timeouts remaining. And the people that came here today talk quite a football game. The Chevrolet most valuable players for SMU. Defensive back Russell Carter. What a game he played. He had two interceptions. And for the University of Texas, the defense. How could you not give it to him? A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college general scholarship fund to further assist students in all chosen academic fields. Texas remains unbeaten. The second ranked Longhorns have the inside track to the Cotton Bowl. Texas.